Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Randy here with Made Free Church. And I guess I hope you guys are having a great, great morning. I know I am. And, uh, you know, I'm thrilled to have you guys here with me uh, as you join us for another online Bible study. You know, whether you guys are catching us on YouTube or Facebook or, you know, even joining us on our Made Free Church and all tactical Bible Guy podcasting platforms, a warm welcome to each and every one of you guys. Your presence adds so much witness to this, this gathering, this virtual gathering space. Amen. We're going to be talking about dancing with God. We're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. So open up your Bibles, uh, grab your grab your favorite cup of, 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 of coffee, and let's dive in. In. But let's open up. Uh, let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather for a, 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 we gather for another moment immersed in your word. You know, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and expect, expectation. Thank you for the privilege of 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 being able to connect. You know, across digital airwaves and 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 video platforms, uniting us you know, despite our physical uh, distances, Lord, you know, we, we just acknowledge your presence in our midst, you know, as David sought to bring the ark to, to Jerusalem, Lord, we desire to bring the essence of your presence into our daily lives and to our study today. Open up our minds to the truth uh, uh, you have embedded in Second Samuel chapter six verses one through fifteen, and may your Spirit guide us in the understanding and application. Lord, we lift up all those joining us through YouTube and Facebook and our, and our podcasting platforms. Lord, bless each listener viewer. Lord, may this time be just more than information. Let it be an encounter with you heavenly father lord grant us open hearts to receive ears to hear and spirits ready to respond heavenly father as we embark on this journey through your word may you may 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 your wisdom enlighten us your love lord envelop us in your grace to empower us lord we put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you rebuild those hedges of protection, those shields around us today, Lord. Give us a spirit of love and grace today for those around us, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I just, uh, just get this lowly preacher out of the way, Lord. And, 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 you know, as you rebuild those hedges of protection, Lord, send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us. Thank you, God, for all that you do, Lord. And Lord, give us traveling mercies. Forgive us of our sins, Heavenly Father. And thank you. Get this lowly preacher out of the way, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. Grab your favorite cup of coffee, right? Uh, find a cozy corner or, you know, place on your desk or whatever. Maybe you're driving, you know, and, and let's dive into the word of God together. And today... Our spotlight is on 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. You know, and we're about to explore a piece of history that's not just about kings and artifacts, but it's packed with lessons that resonate through time. You know, now picture this, right? You know, David, you know, the, the shepherd king, the shepherd who, who became king is on a mission, right? That that that's way more than than just moving you know, some ancient chest, right? He, he's, he's got his insight. He's got his sights on, on bringing the Ark of the Covenant to the heartbeat of Israel, Jerusalem, right? And, and, the, and the Ark is it, symbolic for, uh, of God's presence and glory, right? But, but it was no small thing. You know, it was a tangible reminder of God in their midst, you know, but, 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 why, but why the fuss you ask, right? Why, why, why did David embark on this grand relocation project, right? Well, that's, you know, the, the, this is why we're going to, we're going to impact this together, right? This passage offers us a backstage pass to the excitement, the hurdles and, and the heart of David's endeavor, right? And, and trust me, right? It, it, it's, there, there's gold waiting for us in these verses for us to glean on, to, to, to capture, right? So let's talk, let's talk about context for a, a moment, right? Jerusalem wasn't just a, a, a dot on a map 
for David, right? It was it, it was destined to be the upper center of worship, right? The, the chosen residence for the ark, right? And David, in his deep love for God, saw the significance have, of having this symbol of God's presence right in the heart of their nation. So as we navigate through uh, of 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 16, let's keep in mind the fervor that David had for God's presence, right? You know, picture dusty roads, cheering crowds, a contagious joy. You know, it's not just a historical account. It's an invitation for us to reflect on our own hunger for God's presence, right? Oh, I love coffee. Anyway, as we unpack these verses, guys, you know, we'll wander through the highs and lows of David's journey, right? And 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 feel and feel the ancient joy of worship grappled with the challenges that he faced. And there's there's something about the way that David approached God, right? It was genuine, it was unfiltered, it was an unfiltered connection that speaks volumes to us today, right? So, guys. Buckle up for for a scriptural adventure, right? You know, a journey that that might just store store something deep within us, right? And together, let's open our hearts to the lessons waiting for us in Second Samuel chapter six, verses one through fifteen, right? And and it, 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 this isn't just another study, right? It's a chance for us to connect, reflect, and maybe stumble on some timeless truth that echo through this age, right? So guys, I want to I welcome you guys to another, you know, uh, uh, morning in the word. And let's make this study of uh, a time of recovering growth. Okay. So let's dive in and uh, let's, let's read today's passages. We're going to be in, in second Samuel chapter six, verses one through 15. It says this, it says, this, it says, then uh, David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David rose and went to all the people who were in, uh, who were with him in Baal Judah, Ju Judah, right? To bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits on the throne and uh, the uh, sits uh, enthroned on the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it to the house of Anibadab, right? Which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Anibadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And, uh, and Iowa, uh, Aowa, uh, went back before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and lyres, harps, trampolines, uh, uh, consonants and symbols. And th when they came to the, the threshing floor of Nacon and Uzzah, but, uh, or to put his hand on the ark of God and took a hold of it for the oxen had stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah and God struck him down there because of his error. And he died there because of the ark of God. And David was angry because the Lord had broken out against Uzzah and the place uh, it the place is called Perez Uzzah uh, to this day. And David uh, was afraid of the Lord uh, that day and said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David, but David took it aside to the house of Obed Edom the the get the Gittite and the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom the Gittite for three months and the Lord blessed Obed and all of his household and it was told uh, it was told King David the Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him because the because of the ark of God. So David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obedim to the city of David with rejoicing. And those who bore the ark of the Lord uh, had gone six steps and he sanctified the ox and fattened the animal. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might 
and David was wearing a, li a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting and with sound of a horn. All right, guys. Because we're about to dig into the, you know, uh, we're about to dig into the juicy stuff here, right? Right. David's epic relocation of the ark to Jerusalem. Now, you guys got to picture this, right? Now, David has his eyes on something big, something monumental. It, it, it's, it's not like the, 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 the latest royal accessory here. It's the Ark of the Covenant, the holy jackpot of God's presence, right? Well, why on earth would David go through all the trouble just to move what is essentially a fancy box, right? That's, that's what a lot of people think. Well, it, it's not just a box. It, it, the Ark symbolizes... God's very presence among his people. It's like having a divine VIP pass to the, to the creator's company, right? And David gets it. He does. He understands that having God at the center of their worship and their daily lives is an absolute game changer, right? So fast forward in verses one through five, right? Now, now, and, and you'll find David rallying the troops, setting the stage for this, this celestial relocation project, right? And it's not just about a change of scenery. It's about ushering God's presence into the heart of Israel, right? Jerusalem, right? You know, that the, you know, and, and it's a it's significant. It, it's it's really mind blowing, right? It, it it's not a power move for David, it's a passion move, right? The, 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 a desire to to be to close to be close to the very essence of their existence, God, right? Now let's pause and consider uh, this for a moment, right? How often do we find ourselves chasing after things like success, relationships, comfort, and forget about the main event, right? The presence of God, right? David's pursuit of the ark is a wake up call for us, right? It's a reminder that in the midst of our daily hustle, seeking God's presence should be our top priority, right? So imagine, imagine your life as a grand stage production, right? Without God's presence, right? It's like trying to pull off a Broadway, Broadway show without the lead actor, right? It may look good, but it lacks a soul stirring essence, right? Seeking God's presence is the game changer, the element that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary, right? And this is not your just, you know, your, your, your Sunday thing or a special occasion move, right? It's a daily moment by moment decision to invite God into the script of our lives, right? David just didn't want God on the outskirts, he wanted him to in the smack dab of the middle of everything, the celebrations, the challenges, and everything in between. In our modern, fast-paced world, it is easy to get caught up in the chaos, right? But here's the thing: the 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 more that you seek God's presence, the more we find clarity in the chaos, right? It, it's it's like turning on a light in the dark room, suddenly things make a whole lot of sense. So David's zeal to bring back the Ark of uh, Jerusalem challenges us to reevaluate our hunger for God's presence, right? You know, are we content with the distance acquaintance or are we on a mission to have God at the very core of our existence, right? It, it's a radical shift of perspective, guys. You know, that, that can redefine the way that we navigate life's twists and turns. Amen. So as we unpacked a little bit of verses one through five, you know, let, 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 let's, let, let it store something in us, right? Let it be the catalyst for our renewed hunger to seek God's presence in every nook and cranny of our lives. You know, the adventure begins with a simple decision. Let's make that decision together today. Let's, let's let the presence of God just control every asset of life. Right. So, you know, um, so what we're going to be talking about now is we're going to be going to uh, verses six through 11, right? And this is to the grand entrance 
uh, of the Ark into Jerusalem, right? It's like a backstage pass to the epic worship fest, and David is a master of ceremony. So picture this. The Ark, the symbolic of God's glory and presence, is making its way into the city. And and it, it's not a somber possessed, a procession, right? It's a full-blown celebration. David, in his kingly glory, is dancing with all of his might. Nothing uh, uh, reserved. Uh, uh, no, nothing reserved, right? It, you know, he, he, we're, we're talking about an unabashed, unapologetic moves, and he's throwing, you know, shapes like he's showing. You know, he, he, he's he's dancing like nobody's business today, right? Now imagine the crowd, right? The energy is electric, and it's not like sit back and observe kind of moment, right? But but it's just like let's get in and join in, let's let loose, you know, and, and, and the sounds of trampolines and lyres and shouts of joy fill the air, right? It's a worship party and everyone's invited. So what's the big deal with, with David's dance off you ask, right? Well, it's more than just groovy moves and beats, right? It's an expression of joy gratitude and sheer celebration for God's presence. And David isn't holding back, right? He's letting his worship be as extravagant as the love that he feels for God. Now let's hit the pause button for a second and reflect on our own worship style. How often do we approach worship with the same level of unbridled enthusiasm, right? David's dance is a reminder that worship isn't a dull routine, right? It's a dynamic, alive, kick off your shoes celebration, right? Expressing joy and gratitude in our worship is a game changer, right? It's not about having the perfect pitch or mastering the flawless dance routine. It's about letting our hearts overflow with genuine thanksgiving, right? It's, it's about getting lost in the rhythm of God's goodness and grace. And then, you know, and, and I, I don't, I don't agree with, with how some people do worship, you know, and, 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 you know, we got to set the mood. No, the Holy Spirit sets the mood. Let's just worship. And it doesn't matter if it's your contemporary worship style. It doesn't matter if it's hymns or you listen to worship on the radio, right? We, we, we do it with a heart of gratitude and goodness and, it, it, and, and we and getting lost in the rhythm of God's grace and goodness. And that's why it's so hard for me to listen to. I mean, I, I do listen to a little bit, I, you know, that's why it's hard for me to listen to secular music, right? Because I don't want to get lost in what they're doing. I want to get lost in God, right? You know, and uh, so you see, worship is an expectator uh, sport, right? It's a participatory event, right? It, it, it's not all about how well we can sing or whether we got the moves like David, right? But it's about the heart, a heart that can't help to respond with joy and to the goodness of God, right? And, 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 David, and, and David's dance teaches us that, that worship is an invitation to let go of our inhibitions, right? And to express our love for God in a way that feels true uh, uh, to who we are, you know what I mean? And it's not about conforming to the mold. It's about being authentic, it, you know, whether you're a two-step tapper or a full twirler, right? There's room, you know, for your unique dance in a worship, in worship, you know what I mean? And, and I don't, I don't really agree with, no, you got to do hymns and be all stoic and no, oh, we're going to read, you know what I mean? Get up and share your enthusiasm for God. Get on your face and worship him. You know what I mean? And, and you're, and you're saying, but pastor, that's really charismatic. No, because if you look in scripture, that's exactly what David did. You know, you know, so it's not charismatic because in David's time, there was no charismatic church. There was no Calvinist or reformed, you know what I mean? It was just, it was just the church. <clears throat> so just to let you guys know, you know, so here's the kicker though, right? You know, it, it's not a one-time thing. It's a lifestyle, right? David's dance wasn't reserved for a special occasion, right? It was an overflow of his daily encounter with God, right? Our worship shouldn't mirror that, uh, you know, and it's not just confined to a Sunday service, but woven into the fabric of our daily lives. So here's the challenge, guys, right? 
let's infuse our worship with the same contagious joy that we see David's dance, right? Let's make our worship vibrant, expressive celebration uh, of the God who deserves all the praise, right? Whether you're swaying in your street or, or doing a, a, a David twirl, right? Let, let it be an overflow of gratitude and joy, right? Worship, you know, uh, 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 you know, let, let, let's join worship, right? With, with all of our hearts. So let's dive into the nitty gritty of dealing with setbacks, right? You know, imagine David, right? Uh, uh, you know, David's on his high of worship, right? And vibes, you know, bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, the music, the dancing, and a whole lot of celebration. And in the and, and, and it's like a grand tapestry, uh, a, a grand, the grandest party that you've ever seen, right? But there's always a a a Michelle and David's, you know. The, the Michelle, David's wife, is not feeling the rhythm, right? And as you see in verses uh, 12 and 13, right? Uh, uh, David's busting moves of joy. Michelle, Michelle's watching from a window, probably her eyes raised, you know, right? skeptical expression, right? She's not impressed. In fact, she straight up criticizes David for what she perceives as undignified behavior. It's like saying, hey, King, you shouldn't be acting uh, uh, you should be acting like a, uh, all regal instead of dancing like there's no tomorrow. But, but, but before you jump in, uh, uh, on the, on the Michelle bashing train, let's take a pause. You know, haven't we at some point found ourselves in Michelle's shoes, right? You know, looking at someone else's expression of worship and thinking, Hmm, is that how we're really supposed to do it? Right. It's a common it's it's a common human thing, questioning the authenticity of someone's worship, especially when it doesn't fit your idea of proper. Right. You know, and, and here's the kicker, man. You know, uh, uh, David doesn't let Michelle rain on his worship parade. Right. Instead of defending himself, he makes it clear that he's dancing before the audience of one God. Right. It, it's like it's like saying, Michelle. You may not get it, but God does. And that's all that matters, right? And, and it, it, it's a huge lesson for us that our worship is not a performance for others. It's a heart-to-heart -heart connection with God. You shouldn't be raising your hands up or doing that and looking around and see what everybody else is doing. You do what you need to do despite what everybody else thinks. Period. So now, now let's zoom out a bit. Now let's talk about setbacks in our spiritual journey. You know, just like, you know, Michelle's dis uh, Michelle's, you know, disapproval through a curveball into David's celebration. Life has a way of throwing unexpected challenges our way, right? It, it, it could be doubts, it could be struggles, you know, or even criticism from those around us, right? But but how do we deal with these setbacks? You know, first off, it's okay to acknowledge acknowledge that setbacks happen, right? David just didn't brush off Michelle's criticism, right? He addressed it. Similarly, we need to confront the challenges in, in our own spiritual journey. Instead of pretending they don't exist, it's in acknowledging and addressing these setbacks that we find room for growth. And, and remember that setbacks don't define our journey. David didn't let Michelle's disapproval steal his joy, right? Instead, he kept on dancing. He kept on celebrating in our spiritual journey, guys. Setbacks might be a part of the story, but they don't have to, to, to be the end of the story, right? Keep moving forward. Keep dancing. Keep worshiping. And finally, find your rhythm in the midst of, of the setbacks, right? David dance wasn't about impressing Michelle or conforming to the societal expression. It was about expressing his gratitude and joy for God's presence. And, 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 you know, in, in the face of our own setbacks, right, we find, find your authentic way of connecting with God, right? It, it could be through prayer music or reflection, whatever helps you stay connected and grounded. So we've navigated these setbacks on our spiritual journey. So let's take a page from David's books, right? Address those challenges, right? Dancing through the setbacks and above all, finding your rhythm of, of, of worship that, that, 
that's genuine and pleasing to the one who truly matters. The journey continues, right? And the set and and set these setbacks and all, but keep on moving forward. Now let's talk about a heart after God's own heart. And trust me, right? This is the good stuff. This is verses 14 and 15, right? And, and this is after all the dance moves, the joy, joyful worship, and 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 Michelle's critique, right? And and there's a beautiful moment that deserves attention, right? David, in all of his exuberance, just doesn't just catch a breath, he catches God's attention. Picture this, sweaty and probably a little out of breath, right? From all the dancing, it, it is bringing the ark into Jerusalem, right? And how does God respond, right? You know, it's 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 like, it's like a divine DJ that drops a beat, right? Then the, there's music. There's celebration. And most importantly, there's God's presence filling the place, right? It's a party and God is not just a wallflower. He's right in the midst of all the celebration. Well, what does this tell us, right? It, it tells us that God is not indifferent to our worship. You know, he's not sitting there with a checklist, you know, coldly addressing our performance. No, he's a father who delights in genuine expression of his children, right? When David danced in, it, with all of his might, God just didn't just notice. He joined the dance, right? He was he participated in the celebration. So what's the takeaway for us, right? It's an invitation for us to cultivate a heart that seeks after God fervently, right? David wasn't concerned about how he looked or what the people thought he was all in for God and God responded in kind, right? It, it wasn't about having, you know, a perfect words or the most impressive gestures, right? It's about the authenticity of God, of, of, of our hearts guys, right? In a world that create that, that, that curated images and carefully crafted personas, right? You know, there, there's something profoundly freeing about the idea that God's desires are authenticity, right? He's not interested in the polished version of ourselves. He wants that we, he, 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 you know, he, you know, he, that, that, that we present ourselves to the world, that he wants us real, the messy, imperfect dancing, like nobody's watching us kind of people. Cultivating a heart after God involves shredding the layers of pretenses and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable before him. You know, it's, 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 it's like saying, God, I'm here, flaws and all, and I'm not here to impress. I'm here because I love you and I want to be in your presence, right? You know, it's not all about, all about grand gestures, man. It, and it's, it's, it's about the daily ordinary moments where we choose to seek God. It, it, it's in the quiet prayers and, and honest conversations and intentional moments of worship. God's heart is drawn when uh, ours to ours, when we approach him with sincerity as and when, when we come as, as we are, he's going to change us. He's going to transform our lives. You know, and, and let's not let's not forget cultivating a heart after God's own heart is a journey, not a destination. Right. It's about progress, not perfection. You know, David, despite his flaws, had a heart that God cherished. Right. It, it's about being flaw it's it, 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 it it's not about being flawless right it's it's about being wholehearted right so so let's take a cue from david's dance and 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 approach to god with the same wholeheartedness let's embrace the freedom to be real with god to dance to sing to express our love for him without reservation in the grand tapestry of our lives guys let us make Sure that the thread of seeking God fervently is woven in creating a masterpiece that reflects the heart of God's own heart, right? The dance continues and the invitation is open. Are you ready to dance with all your might? Are you? You know, guys, if, if you haven't received Christ into your life, right? Now's the time that you do it. You know, it's not about saying that the, the sinner's prayer that's nowhere in the Bible. That's just words not going to, you know, really get you saved. Oh, it's 
said the sinner's prayer, so I'm saved, so I'm going to heaven. That's not how it works. You really, really, really have to really cry out to God and say, man, I'm a sinner, dude, and I need you more than anything right now. And he'll show up. And, and, and if, if you're sitting here listening to this today and you're like, man, I don't know God, but I want to know him. You know, here's your here's your opportunity, man. Or lady, you know, what I mean, here's your opportunity, you know, to, you know, to, to come, you know, into the very presence of God, come into a relationship with him that's going to radically change your life. Right. That's cool stuff, dude. Anyway, so guys, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to end it right there, guys. And I you guys, I hope you guys are enjoying going through first and second Samuel. We're in second Samuel. We're going to go till it ends and then we'll figure out what we're going to do then. But guys, if you guys haven't already done this, go hop on our website, madefreechurch.org. Uh, you know, it's an awesome place to find out who we are and all things made free. Now, if you guys, if you guys found these teachings, you know, uh, um, you know, inspirational and you're, you're enjoying them. I, I'm just a raw guy. I make mistakes. I look at my notes. I stumble over my words and stuff like that because I'm not like the perfect guy that, that knows everything. You know what I mean? I got to have notes and stuff like that. So I can actually, you know, do things and say, so, you know, a lot of the times I just write it out, you know, in the end, uh, uh, but it's genuine. You know what I mean? And, and these, these Bible studies. So if, if you, if, if, if it just sparks something in you, hit that like button, subscribe to our podcasting channel, subscribe, subscribe to, you know, our YouTube channel, right. And go find made free church on Facebook and Joe jump in there. Right. You know, you know, and, and just, you know, spread the word of God, you know, spread these teaching, right. Hit by hitting those buttons, you extend our reach right? In spreading joy, wisdom, and the love that we uncover together, right? It, you know, it, it, imagine the ripple effect, you know, one click leads to another. And before you know it, lives are changed and, and the hearts are touched, right? You know, and, uh, you know, so it's that. Uh, so let's, you know, let's, let's, let's groove to God's rhythm and timing, right? You know, and let the wisdom that we've uncovered today become the guiding light in our journey, right? And as we sign off, you know, just remember, God loves you, man. He really, really, really does. So God bless you all and see you. Also, guys, you know, uh, uh, we've got a clothing line that we started called Crucified Clothing. And it's more than just a fashion statement, right? It's it's a purpose-driven initiative, right? When, when you rock the apparel you know, of crucified clothing. And you can go check it out, man, at, at, at crucifiedclothing.org. You know, you're not just upgrading your wardrobe, you're contributing to an old. All the proceeds go to our homeless ministry, which is Believers in Christ Fellowship, right? Where we all come together and go feed the homeless and bring church to the homeless, right? You know, and and our our, our final church chaplain ministry, where we go into, you know, the hospitals and you know, we're going in then praying over people that are dying and the elderly and stuff like that. Right. So our clothing line stands then more than just, you know, threads and fabric. Right. It's it stands for compassion, outreach and making a tangible impact in the lives of those in need. So when you guys are checking out crucifiedclothing.org, you're stepping into a realm where fashion meets, you know, uh, ministry, you know, and uh so grab a piece of, 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 of our t-shirts, you know, we just, we're putting up, oh, and if you guys want to buy stuff, you can go to, to a tactical Bible guys, TikTok account, and you'll find crucified clothing on his account. Right. And, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's cool because, you know, we got, we're starting to do car stuff. We've got a bunch of t-shirts of flannels, hoodies, uh, uh, sweaters, stuff like that, man. And, and all have a statement, right? So you know go out and get those man and 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 support our ministries let's close in prayer guys heavenly father we bring this time of reflection and study to a close our hearts are filled with gratitude for the wisdom that we found here in second samuel 6 verses 1 through 15. thank you for revealing the beauty of seeking your presence finding joy in worship and overcoming setbacks and having a heart after your own heart 
Lord, may these lessons not just be words on a page, but truths that shape our daily lives and empower us to seek your presence with passion. That mirrors David's to worship with unbridled joy and to face setbacks with resilience and to cultivate a heart that resonates with yours. Lord, bless our day, right? And as we go about our day, may your grace be our guide. And may these lessons learned today be etched into our hearts. Help us be living testimony of your love and mercy. And Lord, give us traveling mercies, whatever, whatever we do, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for you are so worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, guys, go check out uh, Crucified Clothing. Go grab yourself a piece of cool threads. Uh, we got some other stuff up there as well um, that you guys can check out. It's actually pretty cool. So, go check that out. God bless you guys, and we will see you on Friday.